In this video, we're going to be testing out official SteamOS on this all new modular mini PC powered by a Ryzen APU. And recently on the channel, I did kind of a first look video on this. We were running Windows. That's what it comes with installed out of the box. But since we've got a pretty powerful little Ryzen APU, I figured we'd install SteamOS and turn it into a nice little gaming box. This is the all new XDO Stax mini modular PC. And by itself, it doesn't look like much. We've only got two USB type C ports on it. But if we take a look down here at the bottom, we've got these two connectors and this allows us to attach different modules. And right now I've actually got the storage slash IO module that you can install here. And basically this adds 2.5 gigabit ethernet, HDMI, display port, and another 2280 M.2 SSD in the bottom. But the stacks will work without any modules installed because we've got a USB type C port here that supports power in and display out. So we could connect this to a monitor that supports power output and display in and have an ultra tiny little gaming setup. Now, when it comes to the overall specs here, they actually make two different models. There's one powered by a Ryzen 6600U, which is going to be the lower end model. But the one we have here is powered by the AMD Ryzen 7 7840U. So we've got eight cores, 16 threads. We've also got that RDNA 3i GPU known as the 780M, clocks up to 2700 megahertz, 32 gigs of LP DDR5X RAM running at 6400 megatransfers per second, a 2242 M.2 SSD in the main unit. Plus if you've got a module installed, you can add a 2280. And like I mentioned, out of the box, this was running Windows 11. But in this video, what I've done here is install official Steam OS just using the Steam Deck recovery from Valve's website. Again, this does work without a module installed. And what I've got here is a monitor that supports up to 65 watts out. I think it's actually a little over, over USB Type-C plus video in. And basically all we'll need to do is just plug this directly into the mini PC. We're gonna use that front port there, make sure it's powered on. And from here, we can just use the PC like it is. It's got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth built in, so I can connect a wireless controller. Unfortunately, the unit itself doesn't have like a vase amount on the bottom, but I could definitely make something work or I could just set it right on the desk. It's not gonna take up much room at all. I'm sure some of you probably already saw the Steam controller on the desk. Uh, personally, I'm not a big fan of it, so I'm actually just gonna be using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth with this unit. So yeah, this little machine is actually working really well here with SteamOS. Everything's working from a Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, right out of the box. There was nothing I needed to do here. Just installed that Steam Deck recovery image and giving you a quick look from our settings system. I did update to the preview. This will work on stable and you don't need to be in the Steam Deck beta or anything like that. I just wanted all of the latest features here just to see if we can get some more performance out of it. Moving down, we've got SteamOS Hollow. 3.714. And if we take a look at our CPU, we've got that AMD Ryzen 7 7840U with that 780M iGPU, eight cores, 16 threads. So remember, we've got 32 gigs of RAM here at 6,400 mega transfers. From the BIOS, I've set this to eight gigs of VRAM. And the first time I started this up, because I've kind of been through this uh, downloading games and everything, this was actually set to 12, but it looks like it went up to 13. Not exactly sure how SteamOS is allocating VRAM, but that's totally fine. We've got plenty of RAM for the system, more than enough for VRAM on this little iGPU. I'm using an Xbox controller. So from here, if I press my Xbox button and A, it'll bring up my side menu. We can uh, disable Wi-Fi, enable Bluetooth. And like I mentioned, we do have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth with this. Bring up our performance overlay so we can see exactly what's going on. This mini PC will boost up to around 45 watts in total, usually around 42 on the TDP, and that's shared between the CPU and GPU. This chip can go higher, but we've got a very small system here. 120 FPS on the monitor, and not 1440p. We're not gonna be gaming at 1440 on this with newer games at least, because we've got that 780M iGPU based on RDNA 3. If you want HDR, depending on if you've got a monitor that supports it, it's right here half rate shading, and we can actually change the GPU clock directly from here. And it is correct with this chip up to 2700 megahertz. No TDP control from here, but you could always install a third party plugin if you wanna get that. Since we don't have to worry about a battery, I'm just gonna let this thing go up to 45 watts with it. But yeah, not bad. And uh, you know, main thing you're gonna do on something like this is game, but we've also got access to a full desktop. So from power, 
right here, we can switch to desktop. You can use it just like any other operating system. And if you use Windows, you should be able to get the hang of this really quickly. Got a bunch of applications pre-installed down here. If you wanted to, you could get in here and install uh, new applications directly through Terminal. But with this setup, we've actually got Discover just like we do on the Steam Deck. That way we can easily install new applications from home. We've got a lot to choose from. We've also got, let's say games. You wanna do some emulators. You can get them directly from here. So these are gonna be standalone. Uh, Retro Arch, I believe is in here. If not, you could definitely uh, install it pretty easily. You want some PSP, some GameCube. And with that 7840U, you're not gonna have an issue, you know, doing everyday normal tasks. You wanna check some email, document editing, watch some 4K video playback. This little chipset is gonna handle it just fine. But keep in mind, it's gonna boot directly into gaming mode, which we've already taken a look at. And if you wanna go back there, I mean, you can always reboot the system or you can just double tap on the return to gaming mode on the desktop and it'll bring us right back over there. So with all that out of the way, now it's time to see how this mini PC handles gaming. First one we have here is Cyberpunk 2077, and I've tested this on a lot of different machines, be it in Windows or SteamOS, and for the most part, on these APUs, it does perform better over here in SteamOS. With this, looking pretty decent, but it's not perfect. We're at 1080 low with FSR set to balanced, seeing an average of around 62 FPS, and if you wanted to take it down to 900p, that's going to bring us up into the low 70s with it. It still looks pretty decent at 900p, but you know, if you're on a larger screen, I'd say 1080 would be the way to go. And if your monitor supports VRR, you don't have to worry about any kind of tearing. Next one we've got here is Spider-Man 2, 1080 low settings, and there's just not any way that we're gonna be able to get up to 60 FPS on this APU. It does seem to be kind of on par with what Windows puts out in performance. I've tested this on this same little setup here. We've got up to that 45 watt TDP. So we need a little extra here if you don't want to drop that resolution down. And I'll tell you, even at 900p, still kind of dips every once in a while. So what I'm going to do here is actually go into the settings and we're just going to enable one thing. We'll move down. You can see we're at 1080 frame generation. So we're going to be using FSR frame gen here. This is gonna take us way up in that frame rate. And now we could actually go to medium settings and get around 80 FPS, but we're still at low using that IGTI scaling, uh, which I think does perform better in Steam with this game here on all of the Spider-Man games. Didn't quite double our frame rate, but it's keeping us over that 60 mark. In fact, we're seeing an average of around 82 FPS now with it. And it does feel pretty decent. Now with the smaller lower end APU, frame generation is kind of a must if you wanna get over that frame rate with these newer games at these higher resolutions. Borderlands 3, 1080 medium settings. And uh, when I tested the same game in Windows, we actually had a much higher frame rate. We actually averaged around 91 FPS with it. Right now, you can see it kind of dip on down, lots of particle effects on screen, looking at an average of around 84. So there is a pretty decent hike when you move over to Windows with this one. Elden Ring was another one that I wanted to test here, and I did have to drop this down to 900p low. Even if I was able to run this chip at 65 watts, we're still not gonna hit 60 at 900p. In fact, if I drop this down to 720, it's gonna be around the same frame rate. It's something I've noticed with the 780mi GPU. Witcher 3, 1080 Steam Deck preset, which is basically low, but with the preset, it does lock it at 60. I've turned that off, and instead of running this at 800p like you would on the Steam Deck, we're at 1080. We're in the mid 80s with it, and it's really playable like this. Dynamic resolution scale with this game does work pretty well on these APUs, and just by my eye, it's not dropping it all that much. And the final game I wanted to test here just kind of puts a hurting on any APU out there, even some of the more powerful APUs. This is Doom the Dark Ages. 720p low with XESS set to balance. 
This is one of those games that just isn't going to run very well. And even if I turn frame generation on, we're still running into issues with that. And it's something that probably should have been fixed by now because the game has been out for quite some time. But then again, this is one of those games that does have ray tracing turned on no matter what. Overall, the new Stax modular mini PC does perform really well with SteamOS installed, and I kind of thought it would. I mean, we've got that 7840U, we've seen this before. I love the form factor, and I cannot wait to see if they release some more modules. GPU module would be really awesome, and uh, for the most part, having something, you know, powered by Radeon would help out tremendously with SteamOS. So hopefully that's something they've got in the pipeline. But if you're interested in learning a little more about the Stax Mini PC, I'll leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. That's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.